Today I'll be testing a 36 inch long, 5.886 inch wide heatsink USA profile against four pin heat sinks from Cutter Electronics with the Cree CXB 3590, 3500 Kelvin at 1400 milliamp. Both heat sinks were hung and leveled at the same height indoors in a stagnant room with no airflow, including no air conditioning on. Identical drivers were used during this test with the dimming lead cut. The current output of both drivers was confirmed at 1420 milliamps. The temperature measurement method was with two K-type thermocouples hooked into one digital thermometer, soldered directly to the crease. Soldering K-type thermocouples can be a real challenge, so a generous amount of solder was used to encompass the tip of the thermocouple. After confirming that my connections were secure, I went ahead and added a little bit of Kapton tape over the soldering points to ensure that additional heat from the light emitting surface would not affect my results. Start time for the test was 12.05 a.m. with an ambient temperature of 24.1 C at 60% humidity. The case temp starting at 25.8 C on both heat sink. The initial temperature rise within the first few minutes was much more dramatic on the thin heat sink. This is probably due to the increased thermal mass of all the pins directly above the cob on the pin heat sink. In order to present the results from this test in a clear and concise way, I had to speed up most sequences 5x and I had to cut around a little bit in the editing. But take note of the clock on the temperature meter on your bottom left there. You can see it's 12.08 uh, a.m. now, three minutes past the test. Um, I took note five minutes, 19 minutes, and it took about 33 minutes for the case temperatures to reach maximum. And what I consider maximum was consistent with the FLIR forward-looking infrared images that are published on the Cutter website for the pin heatsink. You can see after 19 minutes, we're hitting 52.9 C uh, with 67.8 C on the thin heat sinks. So there's a fairly significant difference there. Um, this remains stable up to about 33 minutes, which is when I deem the test to be over uh, in the stagnant environment. It's at this point where I decided to put a fan, an Ecotech 16 inch fan that you would find in any grow room hung over the heat sinks. So you can see here the maximum temperatures have been reached by 33 minutes and I go ahead and plug this fan in in the background and we start cooling down the heat sinks to see how they will perform in a typical grow room environment. In mounting the fan I was careful to make sure that it was equidistant from both heat sinks and to make sure that it was oscillating in the same angle um, relative to both heat sinks so that neither one would get an advantage. After just a few minutes, the pin heat sink quickly dropped into the 40s at 45, 47C, while the heat sink USA fin heat sink hung around in the 60s for several minutes. After 12 minutes with airflow, the pin heat sink dropped to 38 degrees Celsius, with the fin heat sink remaining at 54.3 degrees Celsius. So, as you can see with these passive heat sinks, if you have any amount of airflow in your room, which you should if you're growing plants in there, the pin heat sink pulls ahead in just about every way, thermally. They can be a little bit more expensive when you buy them pre-drilled and pre-tapped, but undrilled, untapped, just like the Heatsink USA profile, the cost is comparable. The weight is half. They're more modular, they're more flexible, and they lead to more innovative designs with better coverage of your canopy than a standard rectangular heat sink. That's not to say you can't be successful with standard extruded heat sinks. Clearly you can, I have them hanging up in my grow room. But for new purchases for 2016 and beyond, I'll be looking towards the pin heat sinks and I'll be looking to support the people that support our community like Cutter Electronics, like northerngrowlights.com and like Pacific Light Concepts. These are the people that offer us discount codes and will work with us to drill and tap the heat sinks for our applications. So those are the people that I'm gonna be supporting. I'm gonna be voting with my dollars in that way and I'm gonna be getting a superior product. So thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys' support and we'll see you on the next video.